So in the center here, this is the chip. Um, and then around this, they've placed the pads on the BGA uh, substrate. Mm -hmm. And then these blue, um, blue, red, and yellow lines, these are the bond wires. Mm -hmm. So then the packaging ho house knows, like, I have to draw a wire from this pad. I have to pull it to that pad. Mm -hmm. So on. So they, they make this then for you, and then the chip is connected. Um, this, so this is now, in this case, it would be a custom package that you design in, in this tool. But you also can buy off-the-shelf frames where they have these pads always connected to the same pin. Mm -hmm. um, and then you they do this for like this, this bond wire for you. You give them just a diagram of where the, the lines go. Mm -hmm. That's the, the first big group. The second group is a, a laminate-based package. So this is very similar to a PCB. Um, you have a uh, a number of metal layers in in a pre with prepregs and core materials. Um, the main difference with PCBs is that they're the materials are much thinner and the lines are thinner. So a, a common package line width would be 20 micrometer traces with 20 micrometer gap, um, which if you go to PCBs that's already very high tech. Um, so you then draw it like a PCB. You you make all of your connections. This is then manufactured just like a PCB. And then they place the chip on top, either with bond wires. So like in this example here, they would use bond wires where they connect, they put the chip with the pads upwards and then they connect the wires. Oh, um, I, I was thinking how it is actually done. So they put the silicon upside down and then... Yes. Ah, okay. And then, so that, that's one option. Or if you have solar balls on the silicon, then you put it with the solar ball on the package. And right? then it is like uh, soldered like, in oven, like standard components? For example, yes. Yeah. But I mean, is, it, also... is it done in higher temperature or otherwise? Uh, Not necessarily. Uh, um, because so I would the... expect the silicon like coming of, or falling out from the chips if you... Not necessarily because there's, un... after the soldering, they place an underfill material. So they place a, a glue oh, underneath okay. um, that's then, um, that then holds them together. Um, and this underfill is, is like a, a science on its own. There's people, if you go to very large chips, so if you look at like a, a CPU die from Intel or AMD, you're talking about maybe 40, 50,000 solder balls on a single die. And they have to actually do, um, to some extent, simulations of how this, the underfill material will flow underneath the chip to make sure that it, it goes deep enough to hold the chip together properly under, under temperature loads and so on. Yeah. But wow. That, so that, that's really the, the second group. And then the third group is, is what you now see with, um, for example, TSMC's COWAS, which is where they the, the packaging material, the, the packaging substrate is made uh, in the same way as a chip is made. So it's a silicon or a glass wafer, and then they etch and plate metals and make oxides and grow it that way. And then you can get extremely high densities. And what you even see in industry is that they might actually not just do wiring, but you might have a CPU and then in, in a seven nanometer FinFET or a five nanometer FinFET, a CPU chiplet, and then you use the substrate material, you use like a, a older technology, a 180 nanometer technology, and they do voltage regulators and power management, um, clock generation in the package substrate. And then it's placed in the same way, you have solder balls or, or copper pillars that you place on top, and then you have a, a package chip. And okay, so, when uh, you read about all these technologies so in nanometers or nanometer technology, if I I don't know, yes. what does it mean actually? Um, that that depends. So 